This regular meeting of the Board of Trustees of the Spring Independent School District is officially called to order. The time is now 7.06 p.m. Board Trustees present, Winfred Adams Jr., Deborah Jensen, Justine Durant, Jana Gonzalez, and myself, Rhonda Newhouse. I would like to ask everyone to turn off or silence their cell phones or electronic devices at this time, please. Thank you. So at this time, will we please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Texas flag, honor, honor the, the Texas, Texas flag. flag. I, I pledge allegiance to, to the Texas, Texas one, one state, state under, under God, God, one and indivisible. Thank you. Please remain standing for a moment of silence. Thank you. You may now be seated. As we begin tonight, our first item on our agenda is our superintendent's remarks. So at this time, I would like to recognize our superintendent of schools, Dr. Rodney Watson. Uh, thank you, President Newhouse and other trustees. Good evening. Um, I have a few announcements for tonight. As you know, this is the week of the young child. So in case you didn't know that, uh, this is a great reminder about the importance of early education, which I know has been a focus of you all for years. We're celebrating this event with a program of virtual activities every day at our Spring ISD Community and Education Center. Parents of young children are invited to be a part of us. Join us on Zoom where they'll find guided programs to promote school readiness. So please check out the information on www.springisd.org. In addition, another one of our initiatives is focused on pre-kindergarten and kindergarten roundup. So of course we're committed to giving our youngest learners a strong start at the bright future in a bright future. So we're also in the middle of our annual pre-kindergarten and kindergarten roundup. If you haven't seen the pictures that I sent you the other day of our billboards that are up, all promoting uh, what's going on with our registration. Our pre-K program is open to any student who is at least four years old by September 1st, and for kindergarten, that is at age five. Registration is taking place now online at springisd.org forward slash pre-K. This year, for the first time, we're inviting families from across the district to consider our new pre-K program at the School for International Studies at BAMO, which will be offering a dual language program. This program is open to any pre-K student, regardless of their attendance zone, and will be a great opportunity to develop bilingual and bicultural skills. So again, make sure you let people know that our new international school at BAMO will be offering a dual language program for pre-K. Well, one thing that we're excited about that happens every year is our Spring Livestock Show and Fair. So mark your calendars for our 70th annual Spring Livestock Show and Fair, which will be taking place on Thursday, April 22nd through Saturday, April 24th at our Nagy Pavilion on Hardy Road. This will be an in-person event with mask and social distancing, and will give our Tri-Club students an opportunity to showcase all of their hard work over the past year. So if you're wondering, yes, there'll be rabbits and goats and pigs and chickens and of course cattle. This will be a, uh, this event will culminate with a silent auction and a live auction on Saturday the 24th. So we hope to see everyone out to support our students who have worked hard, especially during the pandemic. Last but not least, last week we shared with you during our board work session regarding our summer school plans. We're embarking on an ambitious campaign to ensure we help our students accelerate and enrich their learning to make up for learning loss during the COVID-19 pandemic. We're going to be offering in-person classes and virtual opportunities for three weeks in June and for some students into July. 
last week, you all heard that we also are going to be recruiting our very best teachers and paying them um, really well to do this very important work over the summer. So if you haven't seen the video that I sent out today to our teachers, recognizing them and inviting them to a reception uh, next week, we're really excited about recognizing them, but also getting them to also uh, think about participating in summer school. We're gonna be encouraging our students who might benefit to take part. So please stay tuned for more details as we finalize our plans. This does include my announcements for today. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Dr. Watson. I'd like to recognize Captain Don Davis, who's here with us tonight. Thank you. And at this time, I'd like to ask if there are any other trustees that would like to make remarks for tonight. President Newhouse, thank you. Sorry for my lateness. I'd like to recognize Westfield ROTC, who just recently went to their accreditation, which is a biennial every, every other year. They have to be accredited by the United States Army Cadet Command, and they have to score a certain percentage for throwing ISD to continue to have a program in place. And due to COVID, this, this is a very, it's a very hard accreditation, and the standards are very tight. I'm proud to announce that Westfield scored 97.3 out of 100 points, and I'm, I'm excited because it's the highest they ever score in the history of the program. So they'll maintain a unit on unit distinction, which means they can continue to get um, slots for scholarships in the future, congressional scholarships. Uh, you know, there's certain our congressional uh, leaders, uh, Shirley Jackson, what we have in DC, have some of the scholarships they can, they can give out. But one of the requirements is to make sure you have at least 90% of your program in accreditation. So I want to just give a congratulations to them. Uh, President House and, and Dr. Watson, and to those instructors also. I'd like to recognize Westfield and Spring High as well. Uh, Trustee Adams, uh, you and I attended uh, plays at Westfield High School, uh, and we understand that they are uh, one of two schools in the whole region who are going on to the next level and they'll be in Waco on the 16th. Uh, Spring High School had a hilarious comedy. I didn't expect to uh, find things that funny, but you know, it was really nice to laugh. Uh, and everything, uh, I had worried about the in-person theater, but uh, everything was socially distanced. We wore masks. Um, even the actors wore masks. I, I felt very safe. So um, I understand that the Spring High School is uh, making a video of the play that will be available. So don't miss it if you want to see something very funny. And, and one last comment. I'm sorry we're talking so much tonight. One of the former theater students just fought, we just uh, crowned it last night, Miss TSU. Yes, one of the former students that finished two years ago. I wanted to echo. Um, Trustee Jensen's comment about the dramatic performances we saw at Spring and at Westfield. And I want to give particular kudos to the actresses that uh, participated in the play Eclipsed. It's a riveting story. Um, and the performances, even behind masks, were really, really impressive. So I wanted to give those ladies and their instructor a, a, a round of applause. There is some uh, very um, riveting action in that play, but there was in the comedy as well. <laughs> and uh, my question was, how do you make it look so real and not get hurt? And I heard that it was actually <laughs> sometimes they missed and did get hurt, but they they uh, weren't supposed to, that it was supposed to be drama. <laughs> Well, it looks like our students have been very busy this past two weeks. I'd like to recognize Decaney High School's outstanding two football players who were recognized at the Downtown Football Touchdown Club luncheon last Wednesday. We have one young man who will, is receiving a full ride to Rice University, and he's also getting the football scholarship to Rice University. And 
another young man is going to Houston Baptist University, uh, receiving a full ride. And both of them were recognized for academics and scholarships at the Touchdown Club last week. So congratulations to them as well, DeCaney. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. We have no other remarks tonight. I will continue with tonight's agenda. Points of Pride Awards. At this time, I would like to recognize our Assistant Superintendent of Administration for High Schools, Dr. Ephraim Olivia. Thank you, President Newhouse. Dr. Watson, members of the board, uh, as you know, since 1984, the board has recognized our amazing students and staff for major accomplishments. Tonight, we have three Point of Pride Awards. First of all, let me say just how proud we are of all the students uh, and their teachers and parents and, and uh, uh, principals uh, that are here with us uh, tonight. The first, first two awards will be presented by Visual Arts Coordinator, Ms. Amanda Byers at this time. I'd like to turn it over to Ms. Byers to tell you about the student accomplishments. Thank you, thank you. So um, good evening, President Newhouse, members of the board and Dr. Watson. Thank you so much for taking time this evening to recognize two Spring ISD scholars honored as national medalists in the 2021 Scholastic Art and Writing Awards with a point of pride. The students we are honoring tonight are Ruth Hardy, a senior at Spring High School for a silver medal in the national competition for her artwork, Real Fear. And Ashley Romero, senior at Spring Early College Academy, silver medal in the national competition for her writing work, Dysphoria. So both students qualified for the national level Scholastic Art and Writing Awards competition after their individual submissions earned gold keys earlier this semester in the regional level event overseen by the Harris County Department of Education. So across the US, more than 80,000 students submitted nearly 230,000 entries to this year's competition. And out of those 230,000 individual art and writing submissions, approximately 2,000 works received national medals this year, with less than 1% of students' individual works receiving the recognition at the national level. So this year, 21 Spring ISD students received yeah. awards at the regional yeah. level, including seven students whose gold key awards and that event qualified their works to be judged at the national competition. The district is proud of all of these talented young artists and writers and grateful for the opportunity to recognize both Ruth Hardy and Ashley Romero for placing at the national level in this year's Scholastic Art and Writing competition. We'd also like to both congratulate and thank their teachers, Liz Beth Ramagnoli, Spring High School art teacher, and Diaco Melendez, Spring High School principal, for their support of Ruth Hardy. And while this is not our first national award in art, this is the first time in recent memory that a student placed at the national level in the Scholastic Writing Contest, one of the most challenging contests in education. So thank you to Val Hassel, um, early college teacher, art teacher, by the way, for going above and beyond and entering Ashley in the writing contest, and Chris Guidry, early college high school principal, for ensuring that Ashley had the um, campus support needed to take, this, um, to take on this additional endeavor. And lastly, thank you to both Ruth's parents and Ashley's parents for sharing these amazing young scholars with us and supporting their creative efforts at every turn. And so Ruth and Ashley, we have points of pride for you both. Um, and we'll be sure to get these to you ASAP. Congratulations. And then, uh, Madam President, we also have something special tonight. So as you know, a point of pride is given to a scholar for placing first or second at the state or national level. But what happens when a scholar repeatedly places at the state or national level? Well, tonight we get to celebrate such a student. So Ruth Hardy, who we just recognized, has been exceptional at rodeo, scholastic, vase, the visual arts scholastic event, and the Pearl Fencher Student Art Contest. So these are the competitions that we in Spring ISD considered the gold standard for a visual art experience for our scholars and what prepares them to continue for their passions. Over the course of her high school career, Ruth has collected numerous awards. However, this year, she has risen to new heights and has represented Spring ISD with nearly unmatched distinction. So this year, Ruth won the gold key in the regional level of scholastic art and writing, followed by a silver key at the national level, 
She earned a perfect score of four at the Visual Arts Scholastic event and then qualified for state vase with that same piece. She also won best of show for her rodeo artwork this year and subsequently was chosen to go to auction, which is a very rare accomplishment in itself, only 72 out of over 700. And we can't wait to see how our piece does at the auction in May. And finally, last week, Ruth had a piece chosen as an honorable mention in a highly competitive Pearl Fincher student art contest. And this piece will be on display at the museum April 13th through May 1st. Ruth's work is truly remarkable and she has a sophisticated style all her own. Hopefully you were able to take a peek at her portfolio exhibit in the hallway right outside of the boardroom tonight. Ruth works to represent the underrepresented through her art and in her own words, my goal with my artwork is to shine light on others and provide a fresh perspective by showing the viewer what is in my mind and how I see the world. I work to make art for everyone and to one day become a household name while I'm alive. Being an artist takes dedication and per perseverance and Ruth, this award is a testament to the hours you have put into perfecting your art and becoming the best that you can be. This accomplishment would not have been possible without the support of our district's leadership team, Dr. Watson and our wonderful board of trustees who understand the importance of ensuring a meaningful education that is rich in fine arts. Also a special thank you to your family for supporting your dreams and talents, to the team of Spring High School art teachers, specifically Edward Barnett, this Beth Ramagnoli, who have provided instruction and to the wonderful campus administration at Spring High School led by Mrs. Melendez, who truly believes that participation in well-rounded activities such as visual arts is a critical component for ensuring that our students find their passion in high school. So Ruth, congratulations on all of your accomplishments. We have another one of these for you. We are so proud. Thank you so much. I think I saw Ruth in the chat. So do we have her on? Ruth, would you like to say a word? Uh, yeah, I just like to say uh, thank you for everyone who's helped me and gave me advice and helped me uh, steer me towards the right career and helped me with all these competitions. Well, Ruth, we are very proud of you. I also see we have your principal, Mrs. Melendez, on the uh, Zoom here. Mrs. Melendez, would you like to share a word? Thank you. Uh, good evening to you, Dr. Watson and the Board of Trustees. Um, we are just ecstatic with Ruth's um, accomplishments. And as uh, Ms. Byers mentioned, this is not just a one-time thing. Um, this is multiple. I mean, as far as the art world goes, she's like won the World Series, the Super Bowl, uh, the NCAA championship. So she's killing it. So um, I'm just appreciative that we're recognizing just her contribution to fine arts. So thank you for recognizing her this evening. And Ruth, please share with your parents. I didn't see them on there with you. If they are there, they can are welcome to come on and share a word if they'd like, but we want to tell them congratulations as well, Ruth, if they're there. Um, they're not here, but I'll let them know. <laughs> okay. Well, yes, please share with them how proud we are of you. Thank you. And thank you to all of our presenters. Dr. Olivia, do you? Yes, uh, thank you, uh, President Newhouse. Our final point of pride tonight is to recognize a, another Spring High School uh, Navy JROTC uh, student. This time it's a cadet who received the Joseph, Gilliam, Joseph C. Gilliam Academic Achievement Award. I'd like to introduce the Spring High School NJROTC lead instructor, Captain Tim Simons, to introduce the student and present the award. Good evening, Superintendent Watson, President Newhouse and his team board of trustee members. I am thrilled that Mackenzie Abbott was selected for the Joseph C. Gilliam Academic Achievement Award and that she's being honored here tonight. 
McKenzie was selected over nominees from 62 other units in NJRTC Area 10, and she is one of just 13 nationally to receive this special recognition. As far as I know, she's the first cadet from Spring ISD to be awarded the Gilliam Award, an award that's been in existence for over 40 years. Mackenzie Abbott's academic record is simply stellar. Her weighted GPA of 5.17 currently ranks 18th in a class of 675. And her essay for the Gillum Award, Meeting Leadership Challenges During COVID-19, was excellent. Beyond being a great student, Cadet Abbott has been instrumental to the success of the Spring High School NJRTC program for the past four years. She's an incredibly hard worker who leads by example. She's a great teammate who consistently seeks to help out others at every opportunity. McKenzie is certainly a source of pride for the NJRTC program writ large, and I can think of no one more deserving for the Spring ISD Point of Pride recognition. Thank you all for recognizing her for this special honor. Mackenzie's with us virtually, and I hope her mother Ariel is as well. Uh, this evening, they had a little bit of computer difficulties, but I think they're joining us by phone. And I've got a point of pride that it's on its way. Uh, we're gonna take pictures on Thursday with that, Mackenzie. And I've got an award, uh, a medal, and a citation that's also on its way from Pensacola, Florida. And I expected to see it arrive in the mail any day now. So. Uh, more things to come for you, but tonight, uh, just know that we're very proud of you and appreciate everything you do for our Lion Regiment and uh, for the recognition you have brought us uh, by earning this national award. Thank you all. Captain, is she, the, um, is she your commander? She's a cadet commander. She's our executive officer within the unit. Thank you. Ms. Newhouse, I believe Ashley Romero is also um, on and did not turn on her camera. And so I didn't want us to miss her um, uh, for the, the first award where we also recognized Ms. Hardy. So Ms. Romero, are you on? Do you wanna turn on your camera real quick and um, let us congratulate you? Uh, yes, I'm on, hello, thank you very much. I really appreciate the recognition and uh, of course Ms. Hassel's support with um, submitting uh, these, you know, these, the, my, my writing and my, my works to the Scholastic Awards. It can be a very complicated process, but Ms. Hassel was very supportive and I really appreciate her. Thank you, Ashley, for coming on. Uh, your parents with you, we'd like to congratulate them as well for having such an outstanding daughter. Uh, I'm sorry, they're not, but I will, I will let them know as well. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. And Captain, thank you for your remarks. And we will now turn to Mackenzie. I do see Mackenzie on the screen here. So please share with us, Mackenzie, your thoughts. Hi, I honestly am just thrilled and excited and proud of myself. I mean, I don't mean that in the, that way, but I'm, I'm, I'm happy that I got the award. This is great. Mackenzie will be heading on. Mackenzie, you sound so you modest. <laughs> <laughs> but we are very proud of you. Very proud. And your parents? Is your mother there? My mom isn't here, but I'm planning to show her. Well, please share our con congratulations to her as well and let her know how proud we are of you. Thank you. President Newhouse, we're proud of all these students, uh, the parents, and their, uh, their esteemed principals. Uh, this concludes our awards uh, points of pride for tonight. Thank you. And again, thank you to all of the presenters. Our next item is agenda participation. This item allows members of the public an opportunity to speak on agenda items before those items are considered by the board. Mr. Binkley, do we have anyone registered to speak under agenda participation tonight? No, Madam President, we do not. Okay, thank you. So we will continue with tonight's agenda.
The next item is the Board Governance Committee update. So at this time, I'd like to recognize trustee and Board Governance Committee lead, Justine Durant. Thank you, Madam President. I'm excited tonight to um, bring forward our legislative update. Um, both uh, my colleagues on the committee, Dr. Jensen, as well as Trustee Adams, has done an amazing job at ensuring that we have a voice that's being heard, that we're participating in an opportunity to help drive and support legislation that is what is in the best interest for our Spring ISD students. And so Dr. Jensen has created for us tonight the first Spring ISD governance newsletter update. And so I'm gonna turn it over to her to walk us through that this evening. I've been giving these reports for a while and I got kind of tired of the old format. So this is why you got a newsletter this time. Great um, job. <laughs> we've been working on this for uh, about a year, uh, uh, picking our legislative priorities and uh, what really uh, matches our district. Uh, we uh, have six priorities that are online and um, you just, uh, can go into the Spring ISD website and find that. Uh, we have uh, distilled it down to four top ones that we really uh, want to concentrate on. And one is the COVID-19 pandemic. All the uh, things that it has affected are uh, uh, being able to reach our students virtually and in person, uh, what it has done to uh, curriculum and instruction, uh, what it has done to the uh, uh, people who do the maintenance and uh, set up the schools, you know, so, so this is a big deal that we uh, really would appreciate uh, the state of Texas to prioritize helping school districts with this. The next one is diversity and cultural awareness. Um, uh, Trustee Adams, would you like to take that on since you're on that committee? Oh, absolutely. Um, so Thank you, Dr. Jensen. Um, so diversity and cultural awareness is a priority here in spring as we undertake the work uh, with the equity committee that's coming up with the help of Dr. Hinojosa and Dr. Watson. Um, and there is some work being done in the legislature around issues of curriculum, particularly as it relates to social studies. Uh, so there's some opportunities there. And so we have some champions on some committees for that. Right. Uh, the next priority is public school finance. And uh, we had a wonderful presentation by our chief financial officer, Ann Westbrooks, last Thursday. Uh, and she brought forward some bills in, uh, that um, are uh, pertinent to this uh, priority. I will still tell you that the um, good news right now is that it looks like uh, House Bill 3 from the last legislature will be funded. Uh, there may be strings attached uh, that uh, seem to um, come out every once in a while, so I won't discuss specifically, but uh, if you want to go online and look at that, you can see. But I, I really compliment the state of Texas to stand up to their promises they made two years ago and to uh, keep that level of funding up. Uh, the fourth priority that uh, uh, is bothering us is charter schools. Uh, we have not lost huge amounts of students to charter schools, but we feel that this is a systemic issue across the state of Texas, where taxpayer dollars are going into schools that are not always up to snuff compared to public schools. And also they have boards that are not elected locally. So you have a school in your community that ha may have directors from other states uh, and um, may have a different um, motive behind their involvement in education. So I'll leave it at that. Uh, Mr. Binkley, if you can uh, pull this on down. I, I, I have a partner here. Uh, there is the uh, uh, second page here. And uh, these are the bills I identified to look at. And it doesn't mean I'm for or against it or I'm pushing you to be for or against it. I'm, I'm not saying that. Uh, instead, I think this really could have impact on our school and some of them uh, 
in a bad way and some in a good way. Uh, any of these bills can be um, uh, modified by the committee they're in. And if they go out for a vote, they can get amendments. So uh, these are a, a moving target. If you'll notice at the bottom of the chart on the right, there's an asterisk that says, look up the status of bills at, and there's a um, link there. Uh, I'll, I'll be sending this uh, newsletter out to the trustees. You're welcome to send it out to your uh, community. And you can just click on that link and get to, and, and you put in the bill number, you, like I might put in HB 1391 and see how that bill is going. And uh, you can tr track those bills. Now I know uh, uh, Trustee Adams, his, uh, actually his day job, is tracking these things. So we have an expert with us and he has, a, uh, I think, a couple of bills at least that you would like to add to this list before I send it out. Right. Added on to this very good list is you have the particular uh, bill that is addressing HB3, which is uh, Chairman Huberty's uh, HB 1525. That's the, the cleanup bill that makes sure that we get uh, continue our funding. Um, but the two that I wanted to make sure that we're watching out, uh, there was a, a, a Senate Education Committee hearing today where they heard these two bills. Uh, the first one is SB 272. It's being carried by Senator Royce West. Uh, that's a bill that they're bringing forward to uh, codify the idea that we should have a student trustee, an ex officio, student trustee on the board to bring student voice and student perspective to the work we're doing. And there was a robust debate uh, in, the, in the hearing room about potential issues that might occur with having student trustees. Um, and so there was a, a, a really good back and forth between Royce West. There were uh, quite a few students that came forward to testify but on, um, I'm sorry, in favor of the bill. Um, and they brought powerful arguments with them. Um, and so that's something that we ought to be on the lookout for. The other thing that came out of that is it is already possible for the board to have a student trustee. Um, so just something to think about as we talk about equity and student voice. The other uh, bill that was discussed in committee today was SB 746, and that's being brought forward by uh, Senator Boris Miles. Um, and that's a bill that deals with some of the issues around lost students. I know here in spring we have a, an issue with high mobility. Uh, Senator Miles's bill will require parents to provide us with contact information within two weeks of enrolling a, a child. And if that information changes, the, the law statute would require that they notify the school district with those changes within two weeks of the change. Uh, and so if, if that bill gets through the process, it was left pending in committee, so if it makes it to the floor and gets a, a, a vote, um, that I think would assist us tremendously with our mobility issue. Well, just uh, like to point out a few bills. Um, SB 28 with Betancourt, uh, he uh, wanted the TEA commissioner to just give a thumbs up, a thumbs down approval of all charter schools. And um, nothing against the present uh, commissioner, but this uh -huh. is a, uh, a law that would go into effect and it would apply to all TEA commissioners. By the way, uh, that was a robust discussion of this bill as well. And um, it's very interesting to um, go into the um, Texas legislature website and you can uh, pick up videos of these discussions if you're interested in that. Um, we have, uh, uh, if I could. pardon? If I could, the, the other interesting, uh, aspect of that bill that Bettencourt is bringing forward is currently um, the State Board of Education can veto those with a majority vote. This legislation that he's bringing forward now would change that to a super majority. Yeah. Uh, so he's making it more difficult for the State Board of Education to review these applications for charters and reject them. So is it something to watch? Yes. Uh, HB 130 with Rodriguez. 
uh, our buses, when they go on toll roads, and um, if Ms. Westbrooks could add into this, uh, you are paying quite a bit of uh, fees to have public school vehicles go on tollways. Uh, it, uh, I assume the police cars don't pay tolls. Uh, so uh, I wonder, and ambulances probably don't. I, I, I feel that uh, it is not a big stretch for tollways to give public schools uh, free passage on those highways. Correct, and I was sharing with the Board of Trustees the cost for spring is around $25,000 a year um, to pay for the all of our vehicles that travel on the toll roads in order um, to, to pay for those vehicles. So it is quite a bit. I mean, that's a, about half a teacher. So it, it's a significant amount that we're paying annually. Uh, thank you for bringing that to my attention. Uh, another one here is, um, HB749 uh, brought forward by Middleton, and it pro prohibits any uh, local uh, government agency, including uh, school districts, from paying an association uh, dues that uh, use part of those dues to lobby for them. Uh, this, unless you're living in Austin, this is just uh, uh, really an unbelievable suppression of uh, the voice of school districts across Texas. We're not a teeny tiny state like New Jersey or something like that, where, you know, you're just away from the capital, uh, probably an hour or two commute. Uh, it really uh, takes a full day to go over and uh, wait for, and talk for five minutes when uh, uh, two minutes. <laughs> uh, and uh, this is uh, something that, um, you know, I said I wasn't gonna say for or against, I'm against this one. <laughs> okay. Uh, another one is uh, uh, House Bill 1391, um, uh, CFO Westbrooks brought forward this one. Uh, this is, uh, makes it very hazardous to have a tax um, increase for election. Uh, they, you get uh, if you don't get the election, you get the worst of two choices. I mean, uh, I, I don't know what Middleton has against us there. All right, um, uh, you already pointed out that Huberty is helping uh, uh, putting in uh, a bunch of fixes for House Bill Three to make it um, equitable and fair. Is the intention of the original bill? All right. Um, I think that a House Bill 3270 is an interesting one. Uh, this is put forward by uh, the chair of the Education uh, Committee, uh, Mr. Dutton, and it is prohibiting using local path taxpayer funds to defend yourself against state actions and decisions affecting you. So the state could sue you or go in and uh, make a action against your school district and you're not allowed to use your school funds to defend yourself. I assume you could still use a PAC to defend yourself, but um, uh, do you have any comments on that one, Mr. Adams? I mean, this is of a piece with, you know, interfering with local control mm -hmm. um, in a way that I think is egregious. Um, but, but, you know, that. I don't know. These um, build, they're, they're preventing, um, really what you said before, preventing uh, local political entities from having a voice in Austin uh, and being able to defend ourselves. So. Okay, I'm going to skip on down to House Bill 3445, uh, put forward by Huberty. Um, this is one where. Uh, during the beginning of the pandemic, we were able to go out and buy Chromebooks immediately because we had a very healthy rainy day fund, our uh, general fund. And this uh, uh, law that Huberty is proposing uh, says that if you have excess funds, you've got to pay down your debt, you've got to cut taxes, uh, you've got to uh, not build that fund. Now, in 2017, we had a horrible hurricane that affected our uh, 
employees in our district. And then in 2020, we have a pandemic. And um, I, I'm starting to connect dots here, you know. <laughs> you know, in geometry, if you got two points, you've got a line here. So I'm just wondering what else could go wrong. And uh, uh, I worry about a bill that requires you to uh, pay down your tax, uh, pay down your debts or uh, reduce taxes when uh, I feel that we need a health, healthy fund balance to pivot uh, for the best uh, interest of our students in the future, whatever comes down the pike. It, it, it seems that some districts, and I think very a, a really a very small number of districts have made some unfortunate fiscal choices. And this is punishing all the districts, right? And taking away our discretion uh, to utilize good governance to make sound decisions around our finances. And I just, I, I think it's an overreach. And some of us have been on the board long enough uh, before Ms. Westbrooks uh, to have experienced a time when we didn't have a fund balance. And it, it's um, just really an, a uh, very bad situation to be in. All right, um, now House Bill 3846 put forward by Krauss. He uh, wants to prohibit districts of innovation, which we are, from changing school start and end dates. Now, right now we are extending the end date for some students to provide them the instruction, intensive instruction they need and uh, this bill, apparently, um, uh, these people have been listening to lobbyists for the uh, vacation and uh, uh, summer camp industry. Um, it always is peculiar to me. Right now, we're in a um, disaster mode that we're trying to keep kids uh, up to speed in a time where everything has been working against them. Um, but uh, in the future, I, you know, I would consider all round schools if you had like two weeks in between different sessions, the intercession periods. Um, now, I, I, I would hope the vacation industry might see that, oh, my gosh, there's a wonderful opportunity all year long to have customers in that kind of a situation. So uh, I, I hope that we can get into a win win situation here where we um, because um, it's for sure my uh, children and grandkids have uh, gone to summer camp and had wonderful uh, experiences there. And I would like kids to have that. Uh, I also think it bears saying that um, the summer camp group was able to send a lobbyist to lobby for this mm -hmm. legislation. Um, if the session goes the way some folks want it to go, we would have no ability or very limited ability, I should say, to fight back against this type of legislation. And I, again, there was lots of folks from the summer camp industry up in Austin. I happen to watch this hearing um, and one of our, our regional superintendents came back and said, hey, you know, the, our, we have a high percentage of economically disadvantaged students in our district. Our students would love to go to summer camp, but many of them can't afford to go to summer camp and desperately need the summer services that we offer for those students. And so stopping us from extending the year and giving those students the extra educational time that they need um, it's just, it's bad for and contrary to what you charge us as local education agencies with doing, so. Trustee Adams, wonderful points, thank you. Uh, the last bill I'd like to bring forward is House Bill 4465, uh, also presented by um, the uh, Chairman of the Education Committee, Mr. Dutton. And uh, we are due in Texas to get billions of dollars in education funding for public schools if the uh, federal legislation passes. Uh, at this point, Dutton would like to uh, give control of that money to the TEA commissioner and that uh, he 
will do dole it out uh, according to grants that public school uh, local education agencies uh, apply for. Uh, this worries me mightily to have one person in charge of all that money because uh, we have seen nothing against our, I don't want to say anything, I, I think we really have a very fine commissioner, uh, but it, uh, we have seen, um, oh, Hurricane Harvey funds that still are not uh, in uh, where they should be going in the Houston area, because uh, when you put another step in the uh, stage of dispersing funds, people seem to want to hang on to them and use them for other things. And uh, they start requiring all kinds of um, uh, hoops you have to jump through to uh, get the funds. So um, anyway, I, I'm very concerned about this bill as well, well and I'd like to watch it. So um, Ms. Durant, um, I'm going to close my summary at this point. OK, and I want to thank you for bringing this to our attention. I just kind of wanted to have an opportunity to have a dialogue with the uh, not just my colleagues in the room, but, but bring awareness to the community. There's a lot of legislation that's being brought forward that impacts our ability to govern, uh, that we have included in here a link to identify your uh, legislators so that you can send them out um, letters and let your voice be heard. Uh, we continue, we are elected by the community. We're continuing to be your voice but there's strength in numbers. Uh, and I wanna ask any of my other colleagues, cause I know a lot of us have attended a lot of sessions. If anyone else has any other comments as it relates to uh, our current legislative session. And then I'd like to wrap up with any comments from our superintendent. Mr. Depp, uh, anyone else? Okay. So I want to just say thank you to the governance committee for your leadership and especially bringing out the bills that, um, as Ms. Westbrook said last week, that we are tracking and I'm in numerous conversations with throughout the week. I think it's going to be important that we not only read these, but we continue to advocate. And I know you all have called some of our elected official officials, as well as um, advocated in, in specific areas that affect um, Spring ISD. Um, the one that's most uh, dear to my heart, although there's several here that I'm tracking, is the funds for our learning loss. We know that that is, that is needed. And so it's extremely important for us to know exactly how much funding we will have as we plan. And much like we shared with you all this past week, we're planning um, as if we're going to have the money. So when the money comes, we're not trying to figure out what we're going to do. But it makes it that much more difficult when we're trying to be intentional and specific and not knowing. And when we look at other states across the country, there's at least 40 other states that have already allocated their funds and the school districts know within that state what they're going to have and how they're going to be able to meet the needs of their students and their community. And so for us, uh, we definitely need that. And so if any of our parents or if any of you all can continue to push um, we're asking that we know um, we have a couple of months left before summer school starts, and we must know what we're going to do if we're going to plan effectively to meet the needs of our students. Thank you to the governance committee. Uh, you guys have been very busy. I uh, appreciate your following them, Winford, daily and keeping up with the bills. Dr. Jensen, we appreciate your looking into it and coming up with our uh, newsletter here that while I'm sitting and looking, I can refer to this as well. So thank you. Things are still going on. And again, as Mr. Rant says, we appreciate our community following along with us and supporting us as well. So thank you for your hard work to the governance committee. Our next item is our chief of district operations, Mark Miranda. Thank you, President Newhouse, uh, Dr. Watts, members of the board. This, this will be brief. We wanted to bring the board kind of a first look at one of the things that we're excited about for the coming school year, uh, this is a first look at our student rider visibility system. Uh, this was a part of the safety and security program for the 2016 bond. And what you'll see kind of on the screen there, let me get rid of 
this. I don't know if that'll go away. Um, yeah, so what you'll see there on the screen is this is a rider visibility system. Um, riders, uh, our students will have an RFID card um, if is we'll be implementing for this uh, coming school year where a rider for a school bus can scan their, will scan their card when entering and exiting the bus. Um, we'll be able to record the data, the time and location of the bus and receive real-time information no matter where the student is. And so from a safety and security standpoint, we're really excited about this program. Um, we'll also have along with this, a uh, MyView app that parents will be able to use. Uh, they'll be able to receive notifications when their students assign bus nears their bus stop. Um, so they won't have to call <laughs> to ask um, the location of the bus. They'll also be notified um, when uh, students uh, badge on or off the bus. So we think from a safety and security standpoint, we're very excited about the program. Um, other school districts um, have started using similar programs and uh, we are just excited about being able to have a similar program uh, for the safety and security of our students going forward. There will be more communication and um, the implementation plan will be rolling out to schools and assistant superintendents shortly, but we really wanted to give the board kind of a first view at this um, so you can be aware of, of what we're looking forward to um, starting in the fall. Thank you, Mr. Miranda. Uh, each one of our students at all grade levels will be receiving a pass like yes, this at the beginning of the year. Correct. I think our parents would be delighted. I love to be able to track students on, on an app, your students, that, that's gonna be a, um, to follow them on and off their buses. That'll be, that'll be great. How, uh, uh, Dr. Johnson, you're next. Oh. Mr. Miranda, I uh, have been reading about uh, some of the amazing things the technology departments, <laughs> multiple now, have been doing. And one thing they've been doing is getting uh, systems to talk to each other in Spring ISD. I assume this is really uh, big time talking between the RFIDs and the uh, uh, school bus locators to yeah, then put it into an app and send it to parents. Um, absolutely. So we were able to use the program that we already utilize for our um, global positioning. So uh, the same system that we use for tracking our buses and keeping an eye on them will be the system that we use here as well. So they will definitely be talking to one another and, and uploading the information to this parents apps. So. so do you have some job titles called techno wizards now? <laughs> <laughs> we'll check the job descriptions with the uh, Dr. Hill and take a look at that. <laughs> I'm just curious what type of uh, data we will receive in tracking, monitoring, identifying trends and being able to react to those. We should be able to do a lot of, in fact, our system now is able to do a lot of data analysis on, um, you know, uh, bus on times, you know, yes. uh, the timing for our buses, uh, the locations, we can, we can sometimes move stops if we have issues that we see. We can do that now with some of the analysis that we'll have. This will really give us a little more analysis into um, our students' ride, riding habits. You know, mm -hmm. uh, how many students are riding the buses, you know, we'll be able to track that a lot closer as well. Um, which bus stops are having most activity uh, versus other stops. And then of course, uh, being able to monitor um, if we uh, have a student that inadvertently exits the bus at the wrong stop or things of that nature, we'll be able to be able to follow up on that um, as necessary as well. I would think it would help us to be more secure and making sure the students are safer and they're where they Absolutely. need to be. But I would think it would also help us to able be able to track and trend uh, the efficiency of the route yes. and the bus and whether or not. Um, we could consolidate some routes or even are there ones that need uh, to be adjusted? So I would be. Yep. Our system is able to, to do that now. Mm -hmm. And we do, especially at the beginning of the year, try to uh, um, streamline those as best as we can mm -hmm. while still providing the service that we need to provide. Mm -hmm. um, and then sometimes we are able to look at it during the year um, as maybe ridership um, at one site diminishes or increases. So we're able to keep track of that now. This will add to that because it'll give us some additional 
um, data analysis, some additional data points to be able to look at. So absolutely. That's great, especially with the mobility that we see. Right. And uh, the shifting and changes that if we can, you know, tighten up our, our dollars where we can with that mobility, uh, I think that would be Drivers fantastic. will be alerted to students who inadvertently board the wrong bus, for example, mm -hmm. when they come on because they'll be badging on as well. So. Thank you. Sure. Chief, I just completed last week my uh, mandatory no before cybersecurity <laughs> training. <Right. laughs> um, and so I'm wondering if there are any cybersecurity concerns with this application, particularly when we add a bunch more users all walking around with cell phones that are linked right, right, right. to our student student data. The, the cell phone won't have access to our district network. So all of the information that will be pushed out on the cell phone app, it, it won't have an input on that side of it. Um, so we do feel that it's pretty secure. And again, it, it, it is connected to the current software that we're using in transportation. Um, everything on our network is 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 very secure now that doesn't mean that we don't have breaches which um, is why we're having to do no before because there are some things that that happen um i think i mentioned maybe at the last board meeting that we have a new uh cyber security security analyst in the school district um who's specialized and his only role is to be able to keep us safe and so that's something that we take very seriously and we've heard you know from other school districts and seen different things and even even to the point where the state's mandated that we have cybersecurity training like the no before. Um, and so that's definitely something that we don't take lightly. So um, very good question. And we'll continue to keep an eye on that. Chief Miranda, uh, I wanted to just mention a couple of things. When I was reading some of the wonderful things your technology departments do, uh, one was cloud sourcing the bus routes. How, yeah. how does that work? cloud sourcing the bus routes okay did you say cloud or crowd <laughs> oh you know you're you're, you're yeah, checking I could, I could be wrong <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, that probably one, is crowdsourcing then. yeah no so i'll have to double check on that one okay yeah i just it sounded very interesting to me and i had no idea what it was yeah i'll, the, I'll double check on the uh the other thing was uh in the cybersecurity, there is someone who is uh putting in software where uh, parts of our computer systems are being separated from each other. Oh, absolutely. So yeah. that a virus just can't go in and just have free reign. Absolutely. It, so, and that was also part of the bond in 2016, uh, just looking forward, really maybe as a, a bunch of the cybersecurity things were taken off back then as well in 2016, we had added a lot of that onto our um, bond and the lock haven site um, was a big part of that to be able to have um, our data center over at lock haven and so we have both virtual and uh, physical uh, locations to be able to um, have that redundancy and so it's, the separation is, is uh, very helpful Any other questions? If not, thank you, Mr. Miranda. Our next item is the consent agenda. I will now entertain a motion to approve and adopt all of the items listed on the consent agenda. But before we begin, I just want to remind the public that the consent agenda was reviewed at our work session this past Thursday. We thoroughly went through had presentations and had a chance to ask questions. So as a result, we come back and put these items on the consent agenda. So I will now entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. Madam President, I move that the Board of Trustees approve and adopt all of the items listed on the consent agenda. Do we have a second? Second. It's been moved by Winfred Adams, seconded by Deborah Jensen, that the Board of Trustees approve and adopt all of the items listed on the consent. By uh, Jana Gonzalez, seconded it. I'm sorry. Seconded by Jana Gonzalez. 
that the Board of Trustees approve and adopt all of the items listed on the consent agenda. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion carries unanimously. It may seem that our agenda was light tonight <laughs> because we covered so much on this past Thursday, but the Board of Trustees will now recess this open session and convene in a closed meeting in accordance with Texas Open Meeting Act Section 551.071, 551.072, Five five one point zero seven four and five five one point zero seven six. No voting will take place in the closed meeting. Any action the board wishes to take as a result of discussions in the closed meeting will take place after the board reconvenes in open session. The time is now eight oh seven p.m. We will now reconvene and resume the regular meeting of the Board of Trustees. The time is now 10.32 p.m. We will address the items discussed during closed session. Are there any motions? Madam President, I move that the Board approve the superintendent's recommendation to terminate at the end of the contract term, the probationary contracts of Erica Williams and Tiffany Wilson as presented in closed session and to authorize the superintendent or designee to provide notice of the board's action to the impacted employees pursuant to chapter 21 of the Texas Education Code. Do I have a second? It's been moved by Deborah Jensen, second by Justine Durant, that the board approve the superintendent's recommendation to terminate at the end of the contract term, the probationary contract. session and to authorize the superintendent or designee to provide notice of the board's action to the impacted employees pursuant to chapter 21 of the Texas Education Code. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion carries unanimously. Is there any other motions? Madam President. I move that the board approve the superintendent's recommendation to propose the non-renewal of the term contract of the following employee, John Marshall, as presented in closed session and to authorize the superintendent or designee to provide notice of the board's action to the impacted employee pursuant to chapter 21 of the Texas Education Code. Do we have a second? Second. It's been moved by Winfred Adams Jr., second by Jana Gonzalez, that the board approve the superintendent's recommendation to propose the non-renewal of the term contracts of the following employee, John Marshall, as presented in closed session and to authorize the superintendent or designee to provide notice of the board's action to the impacted employee pursuant to chapter 21 of the Texas Education Code. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. The motion carries unanimously. Are there any other motions? Madam President, I move the board withdraw its prior action proposing to suspend the following employee without pay. Dorothea Polidorus, as presented in closed session. Second. It's been moved by Janet Gonzalez, second by Winfred Adams Jr., that the board withdraw its prior action proposing to suspend the following employee without pay, Dorothea Polidorus, as presented in closed session. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. The motion carries unanimous. Are there any other motions?
Madam President, I move that the board render a final order to terminate the contract of Albertine Hewitt and Carlanda Berry as presented in closed session and to authorize the superintendent to provide notice of the board's action to the impacted employees pursuant to chapter 21 of the Texas Education Code. Do we have a second? Second. It's been moved by Deborah Jensen, second by Justine Durant, that the board render a final order to terminate the contracts of Albertine Hewitt and Carlanda Berry as presented in closed session and to authorize the superintendent to provide notice of the board's action to the impacted employees pursuant to chapter 21 of the Texas Education Code. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. The motion carries unanimous. Are there any other motions? Madam President, I move that the board grant temporary easements to Harris County at or near the driveway of Westfield High School in the driveway of Bamo Middle School for the purpose of providing a construction work area as discussed in closed session. We have a second. A second. It's been moved by Winfred Adams Jr. Second by Jana Gonzalez that the board grant temporary easements to Harris County at or near the driveway of Westfield High School and the driveway of Bamo Middle School for the purpose of providing a construction work area as discussed in closed session. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. The motion carries unanimously. Are there any other motions? Since there are no other items on tonight's agenda, I will now entertain a motion to adjourn our meeting. Do we have a second? A second. It's been moved by Justine Durant, second by Jana Gonzalez, that the Board of Trustees adjourn this meeting. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. The motion carries unanimously. There being no further business, this meeting is officially adjourned at 10.38 p.m.